I can't see anything. Why don't we look at them together? Don't they look marvelous? You know, I have a feeling, voices in my head, that one of these wonderful people are going to stop and check into our motel tonight. You're usually good at guessing these types of things. Why don't you tell me, voices in my head, which of these people do you think will stop and check into the motel tonight? You could call them out by color or what they're holding or wearing. Go ahead. Which one are you saying, voice in my head? This one here? Yes. Thank you, voice in my head. It's this one here. My goodness, you were right. <laughs> Just look at her. You know what, voices in my head? I bet such a stunning looking woman like that has some strange and unusual reason for checking into our motel tonight. What do you think it is? What strange and unusual reason do you think this woman might have for checking in to our motel tonight? <laughs> Need a therapist. What? What did you say? 
Say that again. I heard meh <laughs> meh. Her house burnt down. It's funny, it sounded like meh <laughs> meh. I don't know, voice in my head. You're usually very intuitive about these things, but look how well she's dressed. I would be very surprised if she's checking in here because her house burned down. Well, there's only one way to find out. Oh, I'll take those from you, Mrs. Sanders. I hope you'll be comfortable here. It's our largest suite in the motel. Well, it's quite lovely. Oh, this window. Yes, I often stare out of it for hours and hours. It's a, for a small town, there's a lot going on, I'd say. Mrs. Sanders, you won't mind if I just come out and ask you, but I'm so curious. Why are you checking into our motel tonight? Well, if you must know, my house recently burned down. <laughs> <laughs> it was I'm horrible. I'm so sorry. Why don't you tell me all about it? Well, there I was. I went to the laundry room just to check on things, and I noticed that the washing machine was making a strange thud sound, as if there was something heavy in the wash. I thought, that's odd, and yet I didn't check to see what it was. Then I went to the cricket court outside, and as I was practicing my cricket, I heard a loud explosion, and the next thing I knew, my house was engulfed. Was anybody else in the house? Thank God. As far as I know, the house was empty. As far as you know? That's correct. <laughs> Is it possible there was someone in there that you didn't know? Sometimes I have extra help, you see, around the house, handymen and such. I didn't think I had anyone in the house that day, but I can't be quite sure. No, how could we ever be sure who's in our house? Exactly. <laughs> well, you see, it's such a large house. I understand. <sighs> I'd love to hear all about your house. Would you? Yes. Oh, would you be so kind as to pour me a drink? Oh, absolutely. And I'll tell yes, you. Yes, I hope you'll feel free to take advantage of the bar. We have gin, bourbon, brandy, or milk. What would you like? <laughs> Milk, I say. Oh, yes, I only drink milk. I find it... Nutritious? Purifies me. Purifies? <laughs> how fascinating, how riveting, how truly enthralling. My gosh, she's a wonderful person. <laughs> I hope I don't kill her. <laughs> <laughs> I never mean to, you know. It's just that, well, you know. <laughs> Yes, I find that whenever I have thoughts that I want to drive away, a good, refreshing glass of milk helps me do that. Well, that's interesting, because milk is good for flesh wounds, burns. It soothes the, the pain. I discovered this as a child, you see. I uh, was in a small fire, a house fire. Strange. <laughs> What would you care for now? Liquor or milk? <laughs> Liquor. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I've had a difficult day. I imagine. So this is not the first time a home you've lived in burned down. <laughs> no, it seems to be coming a habit. <laughs> Are you saying there's more than even the two? Well, there was the home in Martinique. That burned down, but I wasn't there at the time, so I can't really testify how that happened and how long it took to, to reach the ground and so on. And then there was the home in, in uh, Marseille. Yes, yes. I was there for that one. It seems you should stop living in towns that begin with the letter <laughs> <laughs> Yes, perhaps so. I was thinking about moving to Mallorca. <laughs> but now I should think better of that. You're, you bring a good point up. You're quite intuitive. Yes, thank you. You have to be intuitive in order to own and operate a motel, you know. 
People think it's easy. It's really not. It's really quite challenging. It really stresses you out from time to time. <laughs> but then I drink milk. <laughs> well, I must say, I, I had no idea that a motel would be so challenging. I know hotels are a whole different thing, indeed. Here I have a, a door directly to the parking area. It seems so sort of uh, lower class, if I must say. Oh, the interior furnishings that you've prepared here are quite alluring. And do you like it? I do. Well, let me show you around. This is the sitting area. You know that because you were just sitting. It's lovely. This is the table where you're welcome to sit. And here's a bowl of fruit and vegetables, but they're wax, so don't eat them. <laughs> here are more chairs and a lamp, and that's Skipper. Oh, dear. <laughs> Skipper looks like she has had better days. Why do you say that? Because she's laying upside down. <laughs> Hanging, shall I say. She's just sleeping. Skipper. Don't bother her. <laughs> and the bedroom and the bathrooms are back behind this door here. Would you like me to bring your suitcases back into the bathroom? Or the bedroom, I mean. That's silly. Why would I be in the bathroom? I don't hang out there. <laughs> Sometimes it makes sense, I suppose, to put luggage in the bathroom. I suppose if you're in a hurry and you need to dress rather quickly, you could reach your items. Wait. Mother, are you here? Oh, uh, yes. For your children. Anthony. Charles, Anthony and Agatha. Agatha, come. Oh, Mother. Mother, we heard. I'm so sorry that you were unable to get a room at the Ritz. I will just say that it's lovely. Isn't yes, it? sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's very. Well, good for you. I'm so glad that you were able to get a room there. Yes. How fortunate. <laughs> uh, Mother, you shouldn't be smoking. Are you insane? Oh, oh, well, you bring up a good point. Although we don't know that it was a cigarette that caused the flames to ignite. But why cause extra suspicion when we don't have to? Isn't that right, Agatha? It, it is. We, in fact, were visited earlier at the Ritz by an investigator. Oh, dear. Yes, asking all sorts of questions, being very suspicious of you, as a <gasps> matter of fact. No! Yes. Me? You. I, well, I, I was playing croquet or cricket or something. I, how could I possibly have been? Mother, the new house that you just bought in Miami, they were asking about the insurance policy that you put on it. It's well insured. It has a, a high fire coverage. <laughs> Is that so unusual? No, I'm just telling you that you should be careful. Very careful, Mother. Hi, I'm Nathan. <laughs> I'm sorry, we don't usually recognize people who work here. Yes. Maybe he, needs, he may need a tip or something, I don't know. <laughs> That's it, very well. I'm sorry, good man. Let's see, how much would you need here? Let's, there you are. Now off well, with I you. have some extra you need. Go no, off with you, bye bye. Thank you. Oh. I know it's not the Ritz, but really, it's not so bad, is it? It's temporary, Mother. Temporary? Yes. Until I can get a new home. Until you can get a new home. Mother, I know that these fires that have been plaguing our family for years seems to be stressing you out. Perhaps you should go into the back room and take a moment to rest or freshen yourself while Agatha and I discuss things. I shall go check my luggage. I think he put it in the bathroom. <laughs> Damn it, she survived! <laughs> Her hair is a little bit singed. But how are we supposed to... How are we supposed to get all the money? I mean, have you worked so hard for it? I don't know, Anthony! To use this curse on the family would have been a perfect alibi. Can we do it again in Miami? Or here. <laughs> or here. This is a, an old building, rather dingy, and I'm sure the electric, electrical systems are old and chewed by rats. This lamp looks rather 
interestingly wired. Yes, it would be such a shame for these, all this alcohol to spill on the floor to ignite such a weak lamp in the electrical outlets here. Mother couldn't be to blame. Mother couldn't she be to loves blame. her cigarettes. She does love her cigarettes, and she does love her drink, does she not? A few of these and she passed out. No one would know. An innocent accident, of course. Anthony, what if we were to come into suspicion? We'd have to set it up exactly where we wouldn't. You could trust me, Agatha. Can I? <laughs> Modesto! 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 I had no idea that this motel is Modesto! Yes, <laughs> I thought I was in Buttonwillow this entire time! Uh, well, Mother Agatha and I must uh, leave immediately for. We have some uh, loose ends to take care of. Why don't you please help, help yourself, yourself to some drinks? Yes. Well, I, I probably will help myself all evening. Since there's nothing better to do, uh, I shall not only want myself. A little bit more. Oh. Well, thank you. Very good. Yes. Very well. Well, thank you. <laughs> no. oh, it's so good to be taken care of after such a hard day. Yes, yes, Mother, of course, of course. Oh, oh Mother, look at Agatha's new hair. Isn't it wonderful? It's beautiful. It's so casual. Yeah, very good. Right. It's lovely. You look like a mermaid. <laughs> Thank you. I love to see you swimming so much, liquid. <laughs> oh, how funny. <laughs> you know, Mother, but perhaps I was a little bit hard on you earlier. Yes, you were. A cigarette would do you well. Mm, it would. And this fan to help ignite it better. <laughs> well, yes. we shall be out of that. Well, do call on me for dinner, won't you? Maybe you could come pick me up or something. I... Yes. Okay, bye-bye, Don. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Mother. Bye-bye. Oh, dear. Excuse me. Oh. Yes, yes, hello. Mrs. Sanders? Yes, I am Mrs. Sanders. I'm Dora McMillan. McMillan? Yes. Dora. Well, you do might I recognize the last name. I certainly do. My son, Thomas, works for you, or works for you. Oh, yes, indeed. Thomas. Mm -hmm. Oh, Thomas. Yes, yes. This is quite different than your home. Well, it is a temporary situation, you see. I'm waiting to move to Miami. I'm very sorry about the fire. Oh, thank you. It was quite traumatic. Well... Maybe not as dramatic as it was for me. Oh, really? Well, you see, my son Thomas has not come home since the fire. Oh. Oh, dear. Dora. And I don't know where he is. Well, so that's the only reason I would bother you. It's this motel is to find out if you know where he is at. Dora, Thomas, I believe, is a handyman who does occasional gardening tasks. Is that right? Yes, that's my Tommy. I would have seen him while I was playing croquet cricket or something. <laughs> I don't recall. He also does occasional electrical work, right? He's there every day, Mrs. Sanders. <laughs> He's oh, yes. worked for you for five years since he was eligible to work. Oh, Thomas. Oh, yes, the one with the physique. <laughs> he has a lovely physique, your Thomas. So. Yes, yeah, I believe he was there, but I, I don't know if he's, where he went. I mean, as far as I know, there was nobody in the house. I couldn't say for sure, but... You mean my Thomas could have been in the house? Well, I couldn't say for sure if he had some task or something to do in there. Well, how would I know? Well, what kind of horrible woman are you? Oh, dear. Thomas is, has been a dedicated employee, and you don't even know or care? What's wrong with you? My darling, dear darling, I care deeply. In fact, I care so much that I would like to give you this. I don't want your money. I want my son. And I'll tell you if anything has happened to him, well, you will pay. And it won't be with money. Oh, I do have a credit card. <laughs> 
Thomas. Mrs. Sanders, I heard a kerfuffle. I thought I'd come to make sure you're all right. You know, you are quite good with words. <laughs> kerfuffle it was. I said kerfuffle. Well, I'm adding an extra <laughs> consonant, if you will, because it felt like a kerfuffle. <laughs> I know the difference. I have to kill her. <laughs> I mean, right? No. Yes. And yet I'm trying so hard to be good. So hard to be good. I know what I'll do. I'll give her a fighting chance. I have a wonderful idea, and you'll be able to help. Here's what we'll do. Well, Wait, I don't want to think this part in my head while she's still in the room. I might get so excited and blurt it out and she'd hear it. Oh, if only she would leave of her own accord. You know, darling, I sh may I call you that? <laughs> I saw a most curious little shop just as I was coming into town. I saw that they sold ashtrays there. I think I shall go pick one up. I shall be right back. How fortunate. <laughs> there she goes, all the way down the block to the ashtray store. <laughs> all right. I don't think she'll be able to hear anything now if I were to say it out loud, but I won't, because you don't need me to do that. Here's what we'll do. We will decide on a word. And then, when she comes back, I'll continue my conversation with her. If she says the word we choose, I'll kill her. <laughs> with this knife. <laughs> if she doesn't say the word, she lives. That's fair, isn't it, voices in my head? Yeah. All right, let's see. Since she is such a wealthy woman, how about something that only wealthy people own? Limousine. Diamond. A limousine. <laughs> that is a very good answer voice in my head. Well, I hope she comes back quickly. <laughs> Ah, I see her walking down the street. I'm not sure she has an ashtray at all. Oh, oh, you're still here. Yes, I am. Did you find an ashtray? Would you believe they were all out? Well, that's all right. We have one right there. Oh, that's a good thing. Mrs. Sanders. Yes? You're a very wealthy woman, aren't you? Well, I believe I am. Yes, I am. Earlier you were going to tell me about your house, but we were interrupted. I'd love to hear about the lifestyles of someone like you. Tell me about your wealthy life. Well, where shall I start? How about what you do every day? Well, in the morning, I have breakfast in bed. And then, they come and take it away. And then, if I want more, they bring it to me. <laughs> and then, sometimes, I say, I will have a little coffee and some coffee cake on the veranda. And then I saunter down to the veranda, and there I take coffee and coffee cake. How fascinating. Oh, you should see it. My cook makes marvelous coffee cake. There's no coffee in it at all. <laughs> Why is it called coffee cake? I don't know. It's delicious. You must be riddled with all types of philosophical conundrum like that. <laughs> Indeed. So many. Do you ever leave the mansion? Oh, yes. Okay. Where do you go? Well, my driver takes me to hair appointments and takes me to the art museum. How exciting, you have a driver. I do. What exactly does he drive? Well, he drives a bed. <laughs> <laughs> Would 
you like some more liquor? <laughs>